Hey Labradors, today I'm reading A Rock is Lively. It's by Diana Hetz Aston and illustrated by Sylvia Long. And look at the really cool end papers. This is done by the same team as An Egg is Quiet that we read earlier. There are the end papers. It shows all different kinds of rocks. A Rock is Lively to Fox Carmody and to Thomas Lyman Carlisle, MD, my genius brother who had the coolest rock collection when we were kids. A Rock is Lively by Diana Hutz Aston and Sylvia Long. A Rock is Lively. And that is Snowflake Obsidian. Bubbling like a pot of soup, deep beneath the Earth's crust, liquid molten, boiling. Depending on what type of rock it is, a rock melts at temperatures between 1,300 and 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 700 and 1,300 1, degrees Celsius. A rock is mixed up. All rocks are made of a mix of ingredients called minerals, just as a batter of flour, butter, and sugar makes a cookie, a batter of minerals makes a rock. The recipe for a rock might include minerals like aluminum, copper, diamond, fluorite, gold, gypsum, lead, nickel, platinum, quartz, sulfur, sulfur, tin, topaz, and turquoise. And this is lapis lazuli. Mix the mineral lazurite with a dash of sodalite and a pinch of both calcite and pyrite. Heat within the earth until a brilliant blue. And these are all the pieces, or all the minerals that would make up this rock. So calcite, sodalite, pyrite, and lazurite make lapis lazuli. A rock is galactic. Outer space is a shower of rocky fireworks. And this is an asteroid. This is a meteoroid. And this is a comet. So meteoroids are rocks that range in size from a grain of sand to a basketball. They become meteors or shooting stars when they streak through Earth's atmosphere and vaporize. Sometimes pieces of the meteor aren't vaporized and land on the Earth's surface, and these are called meteorites. Comets are balls of rock and ice, sometimes called dirty snowballs, that are heated by the sun and soar through space, leaving glowing ribbons of dust behind them. Asteroids are gigantic chunks of rocks and metal. They can weigh millions of tons, the largest known asteroid is 650 miles or 1,050 kilometers in diameter. It would take a person 352 hours or nearly 15 days to walk around it. So one way that I remember these, the difference between these two, meteoroids are falling into the Earth's atmosphere and asteroids are usually orbiting. And we have an asteroid belt that orbits the sun in our solar system. A rock is old. The oldest known rocks on Earth were formed billions of years before the sky turned from green to blue, before dinosaurs thundered across the Earth, before humans learned how to make fire. The oldest rocks ever found are nearly 4.5 billion years old. So here's a meteorite fragment from Algeria, 4.4 billion years old. Greenstone from Canada, 4.28 billion years old a zircon crystal from Australia, and this is a close-up, you can see it's, we're looking through a magnifier, 4.1 billion years old, Lucian gneiss from Scotland, 3 billion years old, and granite from the United States, 2.5 billion years old. Very, very old. A rock is huge. Considered by many to be the world's largest rock, Australia's Mount Augustus is a sandstone rock with an elevation or height of 3,628 feet or 1,106 meters above sea level, about 1,000 feet or 305 meters higher than the world's tallest skyscraper. So a rock can be huge, but also tiny. The carpets of sand on the floors and shores of oceans, lakes, and rivers come from larger rocks that have been ground through weathering into tiny grains. And if you looked at them, through a magnifying glass or a microscope, you would see lots of individual little tiny rocks. A rock is helpful. Some birds swallow stones to help them digest food. 
As the muscles in the gizzards of their stomach move, food is chewed, crushed by rocks in the same way use, humans use teeth to break down food. Crocodiles, seals, and sea lions also ingest rocks. The extra weight or ballast helps them dive deeper and stay steady in the water. Sea otters lie on their backs and use rocks to crack open shells on their stomachs. Seagulls drop mollusks onto rocks to break apart their shells. And chimpanzees and crows crack the hard shells of nuts on rocks. A rock is surprising. Some rocks need to be broken open to reveal their beauty. Geodes, round, hollow rocks found mostly in deserts or beds of volcanic ash, hide sparkly crystals. The crystals were once liquids, but trapped inside rock for thousands of years, they changed into jewels of many colors. Agates, too, with their colorful layers created by liquid deposits, are often found in volcanic rock. So we have an amethyst geode, a laguna agate, malachite and azurite geode, septarian geode, azurite geode, a chrysanthemum rock, watermelon tourmaline, blue lace agate, and idar oberstein agate. Very, very beautiful. A rock is inventive. Long ago, humans chiseled rocks into sharp-edged weapons and tools. Flaky flint and obsidian rocks were chipped into arrowheads, spear points, axes, and hammers. Rough granite, sandstone, and lava rocks were shaped into mortars and pestles used for grinding seeds, rice, nuts, chilies, and garlic into food. So here's a hammer from France, an axe head from England, an arrowhead from the United States, a spear point from Africa, and a knife from the United States. And this one is a mortar and pestle used for grinding in, from Greece. Today, humans use rocks to make cement and bricks, paper and pencils, glass, and even toothpaste. Did you know you're brushing your teeth with rocks? That's crazy. A rock is created. Tens of thousands of years ago, before there was writing, ancient people told stories through symbols. With colors made from minerals, they painted pictographs on cave walls, rock shelters, and ledges. They chipped and pecked the surface of stones to make petroglyphs. So here's a pictogriff in Lascaux, France, um, 12,000 to 17,000 years old, and a petroglyph from Nine Mile Canyon in Utah in the United States, about 1,000 years old. And then here are different um, minerals that might have been used to make the paint. Chalk, limonite, hematite, another shade of limonite, another shade of hematite, and manganese. In more recent history, artists and builders have chiseled great sculptures and monuments from all kinds of rock. So here, um, basalt and other volcanic rocks were used to make the Moai, the Easter Island statues, 500 to 750 years old. Limestone was used to make the pyramids of Giza in Egypt, 4,100 to 4,600 years old. Sandstone, dolerite, and other kinds of rock were used to make Stonehenge in England from 3,100 to 5,100 years ago. Marble was used to make the Taj Mahal in India about 400 years ago. Onyx was used to make the uh, piece of art Mother and Child by Isamu Noguchi <clears throat> here in the United States about 60 years old. Marble was used to make the statue of David by Michelangelo in Italy about 500 years old. And granite was used to make Mount Rushmore in the United States almost 100 years old. A rock is recycled. Sedimentary rocks like coal and limestone have eroded over time into smaller pieces of sand, pebbles, and gravel, and then were pressed together like a layer cake with fossils, seashells, and decayed plants. Metamorphic rocks began as sedimentary or igneous, but were baked and squeezed so hard by heat and pressure they became metamorphic rocks like slate and marble. Igneous rocks are formed by magma. When magma erupts through volcanoes, it cools and hardens into rocks like granite and pumice. Pumice is so lightweight, it floats. A rock doesn't hurry. Over thousands of millions of years, it changes from one form to another. This is called the rock cycle. In a process called erosion, a rock is squashed and scraped by glaciers, whirled by waves and rain, and pushed deep into the earth until it turns into magma 
and then rock is once again lively. And here's obsidian being formed from a volcano. And then in the very end, it shows us all the different kinds of rocks that we saw in the beginning, but it tells us what they are. Lapis lazuli, pyrite, tin, agate, sandstone, gold, azurite, geode, chrysocolla, nice, aragonite, aluminum, calcite, nickel, marble, obsidian, amethyst, graphite, pumice, chrysanthemum rock, manganese, copper, brescia, zircon, sodalite, lemonite, basalt, fluorite, granite, lava, chalk, flint, limestone, peridot, platinum, topaz, lazurite, lead, amazonite, diamond, turquoise, red shale, slate, gypsum, sulfur, malachite, diorite, watermelon tourmaline, quartz, silver, hematite, and meteorite. And then in the end we have what I think is supposed to look like lapis lazuli in papers. I hope you all enjoyed. Have a wonderful weekend, Labradors. See you later.